Mr. Thank you so very much. Friends, I may tell you very right now that for the very first time I met this gentleman, this pastor, this man of God, it was many, many years ago. And that one thing that stood out for me was that this is a man of prayer. He loves prayer. Two things. He loves prayer. He loves evangelism. You know, you, there are many, many things that he loves, but those two stood out for me. And Pastor Razara, we want to thank the Lord that we have been with us throughout this week. We want to thank the Lord that God has used you mightily. And I don't doubt that this morning the Lord will use you once again. Men of God, this is your platform. This is your time. May the good Lord use you. Amen. Welcome once again, Fundisi. Thank you very much. May the Lord be with us. It is a, it's a great joy to be back again. Yesterday I couldn't make it because uh, I, uh, I had to, to lead uh, also in another meeting. So, and it was kind of uh, overlapping. So we apologize for that, but we are happy that my dear friend, Dr. Papu stood for me. I know that uh, you folks, you are blessed by the Lord. So this, uh, this morning, in some other places it is evening, uh, we are going to pray again before we open the word of God. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you have given us the time to be together again. And thank you for this program that your people, they're here, governing, governed here through this technology uh, to pray, to encourage one another. We ask you now to give us the power, to give us the blessing that you have already prepared for us. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we are going to share the, uh, the slides now. What is the theme, the theme of our uh, prayer time, the talk this, uh, this week? That question, where is the fire? And we have studied that through the life of the life of Peter. As you know, Peter, Peter was a kind of, he fell and he denied Christ three times. And that was really the lowest point, I would say, in his life when it comes to his, uh, his being a disciple of Christ. But he, he came back to God. And we have studied that he came back to Gethsemane. And he, but before that, he accepted the love of Christ, that the look of Jesus Christ changed his life. And that is the love of Jesus Christ. If you really would like to be strong in the Lord, to be able to face challenges in life, we need to accept that love of Christ and experience it, not just to know it mentally, but to know it experientially in, in real life. So that is the first step. We am, I'm just uh, uh, recapping, uh, uh, doing the recap here. The second one is going back to Gethsemane. That is the time, that is a place where Jesus Christ said, oh, Peter, you cannot even watch. You cannot even pray. But this time you went there and you prayed. And it, this is not a simple prayer. It was an agonizing prayer. It was a prevailing prayer. And he prayed a prayer of repentance and confession, he confessed his sins. And God has forgiven him. And God wanted him to even to have experience even deeper than that. And then he went to the tomb. He went to the tomb and he saw what? A open tomb. That means Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was alive. Jesus Christ was not the one that was tortured and was crucified. He was alive. And that changed the life, the life of Peter. Uh, from that time on, he realized that Jesus Christ is alive and he is so strong, so strong in the Lord. And now let's continue the step right there. 
as you can see, he surrendered his life to the Lord. He renounced everything. He gave everything to the Lord. But now Jesus Christ wanted still adding to his training for the fire, not to be outside of him, but somewhere here. Uh, and I would like us now to study the next steps. The first one is 40 days with Jesus. In Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, I would like us to open our Bibles. In Acts chapter 1, there, Jesus Christ, after his resurrection. This chapter, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, is so meaningful. So I would like, and I know you have your Bibles with you. I would like you to open your Bible, and that is in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 3 to verse 5. To whom he also, he also presented himself alive. Well, um, we can even read from verse 1, so to give us a context. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So it is said here that Jesus Christ spent, spent 40 days with them after the resurrection. And he focused on teaching them in teaching them in what? He presented himself, but he was alive. This is what we have studied. He wanted to make sure that these disciples understand that he is not a dead savior. He is alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days. And he talks about the kingdom of God, the, uh, the hope of his second coming. And then in verse five, verse four, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the father, which he said, you are heard from me. And then verse five, that is a promise for John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So he talked for these 40, 40 days about the kingdom of God, about the future. And then he gave them, he gave them the promise in chapter one, verse eight, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end, to the end of the earth. So Jesus Christ then they spent the 40 days with, with the disciples and he was teaching them, you know, for three and a half years, he was teaching them, he was discipling them, but this time he gave them a kind of an intensive, intensive training uh, for them to be strong. And the goal is for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus told them, you know what? I'm leaving now, but I don't want you, I don't want you to leave, to, uh, to go yet. Stay in Jerusalem. He gave them that comment. And sure enough, they obeyed that comment. And you know, in the upper room, in the upper room, what did they do? They claim that promise of God that they will receive, they will receive the power of God, the Holy Spirit. And then in verse 14, these, that means the disciples, and there were like 120 of them, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplications 
with the woman and Mary and the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. So they were there. They spent already 40 days with Jesus Christ. And now they spent 10 days because, you know, the Pentecost, Pentecost is 50. So 40 days, they have already spent that with Jesus Christ. And now in the upper room, another 10 days. And there they did, they summarize, you can summarize in two things. They prayed. Supplication. That means a vertical relationship with the Lord. They deepen their relationship with the Lord. And then they um, put away all the differences. They have the one accord. That means the horizontal relationship. And that means the cross. They spend that time together in the upper room. And Peter, Peter was there. He experienced, and actually you led that. He was one of the leaders of, of that 120 people in the upper room. They prayed. They confessed again their sins, and they reconciled. They, um, they put away all their differences, and they were deep. They are deep into the relationship with the Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is what we need to do. If we want really to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to follow the steps. Peter, the fire was outside of him because we have studied that somehow he was arrogant, he was so sure, and he followed Jesus at a distance, not close enough. And he, he was hiding himself, but now he repented. He renounced the sins. He emptied himself. He allowed to be emptied. Self, self must die. This is what we need right now. Do you want to be like Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit? The first thing is total surrendering. Surrender our lives to the Lord. Is there something? just between us and the Lord. This is what we need to, to do. We need to ask God to remove that and to confess our sins. And the good news is God is very much willing to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we should not just remain there. We need also to reconcile. Is there something between you and your sisters or your brothers? Is there something? This is the time for us to be revived. We need to be close to one another. We need to love one another. You see, the Bible is clear that unity goes together with our religion. Love is so important. We must love one another. So much so that in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, it is said, uh, verse 20 rather, chapter 4, verse 20 and 21. This is what I read. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. So it is a must. This is not a suggestion. The Bible says it is a must. We must love one another. So we must love God. And you must love one another. This is what they did. And Peter was there. We know that uh, Peter, I'm sure he offended so many of, of the disciples with his arrogance. And uh, his tongue was not guarded at all. So I, I, I believe he, he, he had to uh, make a lot of uh, confessions and a kind of reconciliation, ask forgiveness. And uh, of course, the disciples also, uh, they did that as well. Unity is so important. Do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Those two things, surrendering our lives to the Lord, renouncing sins, 
and being united, love one another. That is the work that we need to do by the grace of God. And then, as it is said here, they, they were with one accord in that act, and they prayed. They asked the Lord to fill them with the Holy Spirit. They claimed that promise. They claimed that promise. And what happened? This is what we need to do. We need also to claim the promise of God. God has promised us to fill us with the Holy Spirit. He is eager to give us the Holy Spirit. So now is the time for us to ask for the Holy Spirit. This supplication, he said, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, asking God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. This is what they did. And what happened? What happened? Well, for Peter, for Peter, and for those who were there, the fire. In Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9, it, this happened to Peter. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart, like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. The fire will not be outside of us, but inside of us. And when they prayed, this is what the result. When the day of Pentecost had fully came, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one said upon each of them, the fire was on them. The fire was on Peter. And that gives him that courage, that boldness. My dear friends, where is the fire? The fire was outside of Peter. That's why he was so weak. But now, after passing through that, the fire is on him. And the fire is in him. And that gives us the strength, the power of God. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Time is very short. We live in a very difficult times. When you look around, the signs of the time, they are there. We don't know how much time we have. This is not the time to procrastinate. This is the time just to put things right with God and with one another. We don't know. Time is short. So let us then today come to Jesus and say, Lord, here I am. I surrender everything. Please accept me, Lord. And then time also for us to embrace one another, to love one another, and time to plead for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And God will give us, said, you will receive the power. He didn't say you might. Once you come to him, and pass through all of this by the grace of God, you will receive the power. And then we will be able to stand and be faithful until the end. And then Jesus will come and will be part of those who are going to spend eternity with Jesus. My prayer for all of us is that we too will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray now and ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we would like, Lord, that the fire, the fire is 
in us, to be on us and in us, not outside. We confess our sins. We surrender our lives to you. And Lord, help us also to love one another. And we are pleading, fill us with the Holy Spirit, with the power from above, so that we can stand the trials and temptations, and also we can share the good news. Because as a result of this revival, the disciples went out and just one sermon, 3,000 souls were baptized. Thank you that that will be our experience as well. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen, Fundisi. The fire must be inside, not outside.